Hi guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today we are going to be talking all about the lowest stress plants in my collection. The plants that I honestly never have to worry about, don't even have to think about that often. They kind of fend for themselves with just a little bit of help from me. Yeah, I've just had a very easygoing time with all these plants. And I definitely can recommend all of them if you don't want to be like hovering over your collection. So I walked around my house, picked five, and we're going to talk about each of those. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. But first, I'm going to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Scentbird. If you're unfamiliar with Scentbird, they are a fragrance subscription service. So you can pick out whatever fragrance that you want to try without having to commit to a full-size bottle. They will send a generous amount of it to your doorstep every month. And right now is actually the perfect time to be talking about Scentbird because I think that it makes a really great gift idea for the holidays. Whether you don't know what to get somebody or you know that they want a fragrance but you're not sure which one, Scentbird would be awesome because they can choose whatever they like. They have over 600 different brands to shop from so there's definitely going to be something for everyone. It's super easy if you do want to gift this, all you have to do is choose whether you want to gift a 3, 6, or 12 month subscription and then Scentbird will send it directly to their email. They do also provide the option of choosing from gift sets as well, uh, filled with a lot of fan favorite fragrances. I am going to show you guys my favorite scents from this month. Okay, so the first one is La Vanilla. And I love this one, you guys. I love vanilla. It's just such a classic warm... Mm, it's so comforting. This has notes of pure Madagascar, vanilla, tonka bean, and heliotrope. The second one that I have been loving recently is Maison Sibirite Spicy Calabria. Okay, you guys, this one is spicy and woodsy and so up my alley. Um, it has notes of wormwood, ginger, orris, black pepper, and labdanum. I've really been enjoying both of those. Like I said, I think it makes an amazing gift, but also you should treat yourself. Make sure you use my coupon code WILDFERN2 and the link in the description box below for 30% off of Scentbird for your first month, making it only $11. Thank you so much to Scentbird for partnering with me and let's get into the plants. Okay, you guys, so the first plant that I'm going to show you is a plant that I honestly never talk about on this channel. I don't know why, maybe because I do just ignore it so much. Like it honestly has just become a piece of my decor that I water occasionally. I was so shocked at how easy this plant is to care for because I didn't think it was gonna be easy when I purchased it a couple of years ago. And that is my staghorn fern. Look at her, you guys. Oh my goodness, why do I never show her or talk about her? I don't know. She's so freaking incredible. This is a plant that I'm actually really proud of because I mounted it onto this piece of cork. Yeah, I did that myself. I didn't even really know what I was doing. I did this a couple of years ago, like I said, and yeah, I just kind of rigged it up and look at her. Oh my goodness. So I will say that this plant is extremely slow growing and I don't know if it's something that I'm doing. I honestly don't really know a lot about staghorn fern. I just kind of do what I do and she just, you know, is chilling. But she's not a vigorous grower, <laughs> at least mine isn't. But she's very just stable, I would say. She just kind of hangs out and looks pretty until I water her. I probably water her, I'm gonna say, once every two weeks and um, she gets completely bone dry uh, between waterings. She can tolerate getting super, super dry. I'm serious, you guys. Sometimes she's gotten so dry that all of her fronds will wrinkle up, um, but then I water her and she's completely fine. I would actually be really interested in learning more about staghorn fern just because this is such a cool plant and I really should be striving to give it more optimal conditions. Um, so she used to live next to a west facing window. Sorry, my phone keeps buzzing. Um, she used to live next to a west facing window, so she did get some sunshine. Uh, and now in my new place, she lives mounted near my kitchen window, get, which gets very minimal light. It's a very kind of low light situation. If it's a sunny day, um, some sun does come through, but obviously we're not getting many of those now. So she's not getting a lot of light. Um, she still seems to be fine, so I don't know. I've considered moving her for the winter to maybe get some more light, but 
I don't know. She's just kind of doing fine so far. I would like to see more mature fronds. This is, she has one that has more of that staghorn kind of shape, which is really cool. I really like that. So I would love to see her get, these can get massive, you guys. Like staghorn ferns, they can get absolutely massive. Um, so I would like to see her get like that one day. But for now, she's just kind of a plant that I do not pay a lot of attention to. I do in the sense of I notice her all the time and it really brings me joy to see her hanging in her spot. I'm like, oh my goodness, like that's so cool and beautiful, especially how she's mounted. Like I just, I love that. Um, but in a sense of like having to care for her, I don't really spend a lot of time or attention on that. So let me know down below any of your tips for staghorn fern. I would love to hear them. What do you guys think I should do? Should I move her? Should I leave her in her low light spot for the winter? Um, let me know. Does yours grow fast? I'm so curious about them. I just haven't really, I don't know. I don't see a lot of people post like information about these. I don't know. But yeah, this is going to be my first one. I largely ignore it and she literally never ever causes me stress. I've never had a pest issue, never had anything going on with this plant. Very relaxed, um, but very beautiful and just a just an incredible plant to grow um, in your home. Okay, you guys, so the next one that I'm going to talk about is a Hoya. She is one of my favorite Hoya. It is my Hoya Matilde. Look at her. She is so stinking gorgeous. Um, so this is definitely one of the easiest Hoya that I've grown. One of the most prolific. Like she's constantly growing. She has new little growth coming in right now. If you can see right here. It's so cute. I've had her for a little while now, um, got her as a small cutting, grown her out, I've chopped her a couple of times, and yeah, she has just never caused me any type of headache. It's truly just been such a joy to grow her. I love, she sometimes gives me these really round leaves. I feel like I point these out every time I show her, but like look how round and cool that is. And then there's another one down here. Look at how big and round that one is. It looks like a coin or something. It's just so neat. Do you guys know what I just recently learned? I I did not know this. I had no idea that this um, Hoya Matilde is a cross between Hoya Carnosa and Hoya Serpens. I did not know that, but that makes sense. That makes total sense as, as for the shape. I just, I don't know, that was news to me. Like, is this common knowledge? And I was just the only person that didn't know. I don't know. But the fact that Carnosa is one of the parents really makes sense um, regarding how easy this is because Carnosa is such an easy Hoya. But yeah, genuinely, I've never had any problems. Um, some Hoya can be picky with repotting. Never had that with her. She's been perfectly fine um, whenever I've repotted her. Propagation has been easy. Never had a pest on her. Like, honestly, it's just been... It's just been breezy with her and I love her so much. It's so rewarding just how much she grows. I love her leaves. The shape of Hoya Matilde is just so gorgeous. Definitely one of my faves. I know you guys have seen her multiple times on the channel now. I love that a new vine is coming out here. I love that so much. And I love when Hoya decide to shoot off a new vine. That's just so exciting. She's pretty much outgrowing the trellis that she's on now. I don't know what I should do. Um, put her on a different, bigger trellis or um, grow her trailing. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but I originally wanted to put Hoya Serpents on this snake trellis, but I couldn't get my hands on Hoya Serpents. Now I have a Hoya Serpent, so I'm thinking that whenever I remove her from this trellis, then I will save this to use for my Hoya Serpents which is really exciting, but yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Let me know if you have any ideas. Should I, do you grow your Matilde trailing or do you always have it climbing? I know some Hoya really do better climbing. So I don't know, let me know your opinions, but yeah, Hoya Matilde, love her, good woman. Okay. Okay, the next one is a plant that I've had for quite some time now. I've talked about it a little bit before, um, and that is my aloe. Okay, so I've never had like a proper ID on this, but from what I can find online, I'm guessing that it's aloe aculata. Wait, is that what it is? Aculiata, um, something like that. 
or the prickly aloe which makes sense like look at how thorny she is you guys like she is seriously prickly oh my goodness if you watch my house plant tour i dropped her while i was filming that and she has a broken um whatever this is called leaf situation here which is unfortunate, but she's fine. Okay, so I am not kidding you guys. I can ignore this for so long. In fact, I have. I don't even remember the last time I've watered this. Yes, it is fall right now, so um, that plays into it. I definitely try to keep on top of watering her in the summer, but even then, like I've never really had any issues. <laughs> like I could probably not water her for months and she would be fine. She's so hardy that way. The only issue that I have had had with her is um, getting sunburnt. I've definitely um, sunburnt some of her leaves before. They'll just turn like a really dark purple and look kind of unwell. And then I just either turn her or pull her away from um, the sun. She used to live like right in a south facing window. I mean, I guess she does again here, but it hasn't been, I haven't lived here throughout like the scorcher of summer yet. So um, it'll be interesting like I haven't experienced all the seasons in this new house, so yeah, it'll be interesting um, just going going through that in a new place. But yeah, this aloe, so hardy. Um, I think that she's very cool. Like, I love the way that she looks. I love the colors. She has like a red, red, reddy purplish, and then the kind of like muted green. I just think that she looks really cool. I also love the pot that I have her in here with the snakes got a snake theme going on here but yeah just a cool a cool different type of aloe that's literally one of the easy this is probably the easiest plant in my whole collection I do absolutely nothing for this plant like honestly she just chills lives her life in the window and yeah I still have her right on the windowsill even though it is um cold out now and she seems to be fine so so cool easy aloe option let me know if any of you guys have this one because I never see people have these. Maybe I just don't notice, but I honestly feel like I never ever see these. <laughs> so let me know. Okay, next you guys, I have a philodendron. I do. Now philodendron are interesting. It's such a diverse genus that that really varies regarding the care between the different species. Um, some of them are super easy. Some of them can be more difficult. But this one that I'm about to show you has truly never, never really caused me any headache. It's just been a super tough plant. And that is my, oh, it's dripping water on me because I just watered him a couple of hours ago. But it is my philodendron billetier. Look at him. Look at how cool he's looking. He's literally dripping water all over me, but it's fine. Um, so yeah, my philodendron billetier. This has honestly just been such an easygoing plant it's so tough like whatever conditions i grow it in it just finds a way to adapt he is giving me these beautiful leaves i know i've shown him somewhat recently in um a favorites was it my october favorites or i'm not sure just a very tough plant he doesn't seem too fussed when it comes to humidity i have never had a pest on him knock on wood because he is living in the thrip zone you guys but so far i just haven't had any problems so i really hope that he doesn't get sick with them he surprised me with this new leaf after the move which was very exciting and he's just a plant that i'm just i'm really excited to watch him mature and i feel like that's actually an attainable goal after experiencing just just how well he grows and how he doesn't really seem to mind um, whatever conditions I give him. Oh yeah, one of the biggest reasons that I did want to mention him and that he popped into my mind um, to be featured in this video is because even when he's bone dry, he doesn't like droop, he doesn't turn yellow or anything like that. Like I have a lot of philodendron and different plants that if I miss out on their watering, like if I water a couple days late or something like that, I'll lose a leaf, like a leaf will yellow off and die, which like fair enough. But um, he doesn't do that. Like he honestly never drops leaves. I still have these super old, like weird leaves from when I first um, started growing him from a cutting after shipping. And yeah, he's just like hanging on to those. I have no idea why. I could probably chop them off to be honest with you, but they're just there for now. Yeah, he doesn't do that. He doesn't, he doesn't yellow or really wilt in my experience. 
Like he just patiently waits, looking cute, until I come around with my watering can. So yeah, like truly it's very stress-free in my experience. Okay, you guys, so the last one, it's another Hoya. It's one of my first, one of my first plants when I started getting into plants. Um, and I have literally, oh, this one is wet too. I have literally not ever had a problem with it. Not a single problem. Um, I don't even think I've ever like had a leaf yellow on this thing. Um, yes, okay, this is my baby. My Hoya Compacta, look at her, oh my goodness. I honestly can't believe how big this plant is. Like it was a tiny, tiny, it was probably like this big when I first got it um, in a little four inch pot from a big box store. And yeah, as you can see, she has really taken off over the years. I've had her for probably uh, two and a half years. And yeah, like I said, I literally, I just have not had any problems. And I was debating whether I wanted to include this Hoya or my Hoya Crimson Queen. You guys know I have my large basket of Hoya Crimson Queen, which is another one that is just so easy, hasn't really caused me any stress, but that one does occasionally lose leaves, like they'll yellow off. And um, I like, it's by no means a finicky plant. It's super easy. I obviously considered putting it in this video but this one I've just never like I'm I haven't had a single thing happen with this plant like it's honestly just been so incredibly smooth sailing yeah I don't water this thing very often probably every four to six weeks it bloomed for me the first for the first time in the summer which is very exciting and yeah it lives on the windowsill in my bedroom and I literally do nothing special for it. Hoya Compacta will always be one of my all-time favorite plants. I'm obsessed with the way that they look. I think that they're so unique, so cool looking. Um, I've gone on about this before. I just really am a big fan of this plant. I know some people, it's not their cup of tea, but for me, this is just like absolute perfection. I would love for my variegated ones to get big like this one day. I want this to even grow bigger. I wanna have like, one day I would like to repot this into a hanging basket so I can grow it um, uh, in a basket and it can like trail all the way down. Oh my goodness. I wonder how long these can get. I should investigate that. Like how, is there a limit? to how long the vines can grow. If anybody knows, let me know because like, I just want one that's like from the ceiling to the floor. <laughs> that's what I want. They are rather slow growing, but slow and steady, baby. Slow and steady. Definitely worth the wait. Okay guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I cannot wait to chat with you in the comments. I love all the plants that I mentioned. Um, because of many reasons, but obviously because of the fact that they just do not stress me out. Like we love that. We love a stress-free life. Well, not completely stress-free because that's unrealistic and some stress is good, but you know what I'm saying. Some plants are just a headache. I'm looking at you, Thai constellation. Like I said, leave me a comment. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to check out Scentbird in the description box if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.